Hello folks, so we're getting ready to take down several lemon gum eucalyptus. Well, they're not eucalyptus anymore, they're called lemon scented gum. Anyway, how do you like the way I attached to that crane hook there? Let me know what you think about that. I do it a lot differently these days. This was back in 2018. Putting the VT hitch on there. Tying the old anchor hitch to the Petzl ball lock carabiner. I really like those ball lock carabiners. Some people don't, but uh, they're one of my favorite. Easy to open if you know what you're doing. Got the full crew there today, ready to take down some lemon gum. Nice to have a good team there, but man, crane work takes a lot of guys just standing around for most of the time, but then you need a lot of guys to pull and move stuff, get ready for the chipper. Got the old tree motion harness there with the original bridge. Which I should probably change that thing one of these days. There's the old, good old Mike, A1 crane. He went up north. Here I'm flying up to the sky, up to do those trees. Now I'm kind of clutching on for dear life, which you don't want to do that. Like I always say, you got to trust your ropes. Just ride it up. No reason to clutch onto those ropes. Now as you can see, these lemon gum trees are real spindly they're just big old weeds basically and um, I was afraid to tie off too high up in the tree because they might break of course they are really hard wood and they, they are flexible uh, it's just they're just kind of a weird situation with the crane especially there's no center there's no central leader there's no center to the tree on this one in particular like a pine tree or you know, a liquid amber tree, they'll have a nice central leader you can tie off to or tie into when you're climbing. But you can see here, it's just a big Y shape. And so it's tricky, you know, you can do like a spider leg and whatnot with the crane. But yeah, these are so spindly. So it's a little tricky. And tying off with that big dumb strap doesn't quite work with that slippery lemon gum. So that big strap works okay as a backup down there, but I've learned throughout the process you want to have your, uh, your like your 10x or, or some strong bull rope. Good set of crane slings is what I prefer. So on this one, I just decided that I'd use the strap, and I'm just going to come down and cut it at the bottom at the base, so that. Plenty of the weight is down at the bottom, so it doesn't indo or invert and hit that building. There's all that tile right there behind me and the whole white building and all the windows and whatnot. So I'm just going all the way to the bottom. First pick of the day though, and so it's a little nerve wracking, because you never know. And these lemon gum are super heavy. One reason I love crane work is repelling. Repelling is the funnest part of the job, or at least one of the best things about it. Sometimes it's the best part of the day. Sometimes I'm tempted to use the uh, figure eight or just some kind of repelling device. I'm going all the way down. So yeah, like I said, I'm just gonna go to the bottom, cut it off the ground, that way it won't endo, and I'm sure the crane can handle it. Let's hope so. Yeah, I'm always looking for ways, different ways to go faster and more efficient. So right here, you know, repelling with my VT hitch, climber's hitch there, works, but I'm tempted to use the figure eight, but that would take time to untie my hitch and then put the figure eight on and then repel down. Of course, it would be a lot less wear and tear on my gear, though. So, you know, right there with my, my friction hitch, and the pulley, the DMM there and all that's great for if I'm going up and down but you don't go up very often when you're using the crane of course as I'm pulling it down I have someone on the ground helping me usually feed it back into my bag so there's different ways you can do it in this case I untied it so I might as well have used a figure eight to repel because it's very fast and it's less wear and tear on the rope and that little friction uh, that little hitch cord there 
461, whatever, 261, 461. Just make sure this chain is sharp here. And actually, these are a little bitch saw. Not a bad saw. We always have a couple of these laying around, and we always have one on the truck. They're actually reliable, lightweight. Called the uh, Husqvarna Rancher. It's kind of like the homeowner saw. It's like the still farm boss. Not a bad saw. It's good to talk around and keep in the truck. I'd much rather have the 461 here, but the guys didn't have it ready yet. You can see my guy standing over there. Husqvarna Rancher. Actually comparable to the 261, but not as light and not as strong, I'd say, and just kind of junky. But for a cheap little Husqvarna homeowner saw, these are great to have on the truck just for a little back up, bucking up, quick palm cutting saw. This is where the crew comes into action. You need a bunch of guys to drag this big tree around and pull it around and get it into position and then chip it. And meanwhile, we just stand around. So now I'm up in the next tree and we're going to be piecing this one out. This is a bigger tree, has no center to it. And looking back, I definitely should have used my own slings, but sometimes the crane guys talk me into using their, their straps. I should have tied this up a lot higher. And you'll see why. So looking back on myself here, I wish I had just left uh, safety or my lifeline up in another part of the tree so I didn't have to screw around trying to untie and put my other line over there and all that. Because uh, it is quite angled. You can't quite tell in this video, but where I'm trying to put my line, you know, I'm putting my lanyard on there now. And then I'm going to pull my, my lifeline out and then throw it up into that crotch. If I just had my lifeline into another higher part of the tree, it would have saved a little bit of time. And after all, time is money with that crane. So this is definitely where I, if I put my my lifeline there that I'm holding on to, if I put it in another part of the tree, I could have easily just swung over, not have to worry about untying it from the crane and repositioning it and all that. Probably would have been safer also. So it's just something to think about planning ahead, you know. But when you got the crane going, everybody's standing around, you're trying to move fast. But yeah, I definitely would have had my lifeline up in another part of the tree, even though it is a little more tricky than it looks. But having to reposition your your uh, your lifeline there like I'm doing now wastes a lot of time when you add it all up. Of course, it would be helpful to have the eye on the end of the rope instead of tying it, which I usually do, but not today, obviously.
Yeah, so looking back on this, I could have tied it off a little bit higher, maybe in a second spot with a proper sling, but these are brittle. Very brittle eucalyptus at the end right there. Oh wait, I mean, not eucalyptus, these are lemon-scented gum, or... top cut a little bit further out than my bottom cut intentionally because I knew that thing would probably invert towards me so it gave me a little bit of time to get out of the way because you make that little shelf so it doesn't just pop right up in your face. So by cutting it a little bit higher on the top side, it gives you a chance to kind of get it out of the way so it hooks on there so it doesn't swing up in your face. Take just enough meat off so the crane can break it free, but so you have enough time to get out of the way. Yeah, man, those are top heavy. All those leaves added up way a lot. And they're hard to tie off up top, up high. So, but I could have tied it a lot higher. I could have put three rope slings instead of those stupid straps. Live and learn. Live and learn. standard strap and shackle. I like the three quarter inch rope sling that you tie off. It might take a bit longer, but it is worth it on these types of situations. Inverting is not fun when you're using a crane. And I mostly feel bad for the crane because those cranes are actually very delicate and they have cables and things for sensors and if you just barely touch them they can shut down and then you're done for the day so you don't want to invert if you can avoid it so here I'm using a three-quarter inch sling and tying it up higher learning from my mistakes Nowadays, I don't even use these uh, straps and shackles. I just don't like them on these slippery lemon gum. Straps and shackles have their place, especially with bigger wood like pines or whatnot, or palms. But not for these little ones. So um, when the ground guys or the crane guy tells you, just use the shackle, you might want to think twice. 
These lemon gums are so slippery, and I'm tying off on, you know, small diameter wood. They're sm they're small, and the shackles just don't do the job like I like it. So I've had some special slings made. We can do the spider sling kind of a thing. You might think that it takes a little longer to tie them off, but actually if you know how to tie and you just practice, it doesn't take any longer. And you don't want to be afraid to tie them up high, especially if you have two or three. If you have three, you can tie them real high up there. These are actually very flexible. They're not going to just snap. They're not dead. They're flexible and they're pretty hard wood. Now, if these trees had been topped in the past and there were big sucker shoots coming off the top, that would be a completely different story. As you can see, this tree in particular is nice and untouched, not topped, nice structural wood all the way through. Ow. And that's why nowadays I use a face shield. That would freaking hurt. That could bust your teeth out. Thank you. 
everything's kind of going sideways. Going way out there laterally. Makes it a little bit tricky, that one going horizontally. And I have to make my cut on a horizontal section. This is a weird tree going way out there over the street like that. That one's all tied off. It's ready to go. Now I just got to figure out how to get myself into position and cut that section that's right there. It's going way out sideways. And I want to make sure it doesn't kick back into my face. these two nice pieces here. Right there, I was trying to tell my crew, yay, let's get a rope on this, a tagline, pull it. Some people do the bench cut, which is good, but... to do more of a snap cut holds it vertically Holds it nicely there until you want it to snap, kind of sideways there, and that's what the crane is doing. Good crane work. Great crane work. I've used a few different crane operators, and they all have their benefits and uh, drawbacks. Uh, some are good, and some aren't that great. But this guy here, A1 Crane, he's pretty darn good and I never had a complaint. Oh yes, that was probably the pick of the day. Look at my holding wood there, a snap cut.